Hey, Adam Taxon here in Ormond Beach, Florida. Uh, last one I'm going to do this week before Shabbos. It's my sunset report a little early. I can get to the beach, I guess, if I get this done. I uh, have enough time before the sun sets. Or I think we start at 7.30 around here. It's a little early. Uh, let's talk about this week's Torah reading. However, someone let me know if the wind gets annoying. I do not have a screen on. And uh, if it becomes hard to hear... Okay, I'll just end it. I will do that because uh, I got to get this windscreen. I just can't find it. And uh, the point of this one really is to read the Dennis Prager essays that I have cited. I'm really just trying to entice you. I'm not trying to pass off Dennis Prager's great work on this issue as mine. Uh, this week in the Torah, we read two parshas. I like to talk about the Torah reading of the week when I do my Friday sunset report. Uh, look. It's one a lot of people don't want to talk about because uh, homosexuality is a very trendy issue. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say something considered homophobic, then it's considered a career breaker, or it becomes a career breaker. God forbid you say what the Torah says. I have the links to uh, Gen uh, Genesis, Leviticus, eight, Leviticus 18, 22, and 2013 up there. I don't have it right here. Uh, I would gladly read it in English, but you have the links right there, and that's what the Torah says. Um, so you have that. Now, I also included something that I imagine a lot of rabbis at places where you have a congregation of mixed politics, many people who'd be offended would prefer, and I put the link in there too, to talk about uh, the line that says, love your neighbor as yourself. What is that? I think 19, chapter 19, verse 18, part of another line. It's a two-part sentence. So obviously that's a lot more comfortable to talk about. But what's in the Torah is in the Torah. We accept the whole Torah, right? And uh, that's enough for me uh, with an intro. The point is really to read this Dennis Prager piece, which I agree with. Uh, he makes the piece claim that homosexuality is not unnatural. It's actually quite natural, but the unique thing was Judaism uh, basically saying it may be the natural thing and it's common in every other society, but that's not what we're going to do. We're going to elevate the woman. We're going to elevate and, you know, uh, marital male female sex. And um, that's the way to go. Our priority will be what's best for society and what is. Uh, best for raising the family and really try to restrict it to the, um, not necessarily what's pleasurable. Someone's doing some lawn work around here. Oh, well, um, not what's pleasurable, but what's best for everyone. And that is monogamous marital relationships. Okay. I'm not pretending I've been holy my whole life, but we're not going to get into that. Um, let me read you from, uh, from this. Uh, what was unique about Judaism is that it demanded that all sexual activity be channeled into marriage, and that changed the world. Uh, the Torah's prohibition of non-marital sex quite simply made the great creation of Western civilization possible. Societies that did not place boundaries around sexuality were stymied in their development, and the subsequent dominance of the Western world can largely be attributed to the sexual revolution initiated by Judaism and later carried forward by Christianity. Uh, let me skip around. There is a very interesting sentence. You may not want to read it with children. A sentence, a paragraph. Human sexual, especially male sexuality, is polymorphous or utterly wild, far more so than animal sexuality. Men have had sex with women and with men, with little girls and young boys, with a single partner and in large groups, with total strangers and immediate family members, and with a variety of domesticated animals. They have achieved orgasm with inanimate objects such as leather, blah, blah, blah. Reminds me of uh, uh, two things I heard. One, it was a rabbi, not Chabad, uh, an Orthodox rabbi in the Philadelphia area. He said, look, there's a reason the Torah prohibits all these things. It's because people were doing them. Um, there's a reason it doesn't say not to have sex with plants because that really wasn't a common thing. Though I guess Prager suggests it might be. In the well, plants are animate objects, not inanimate objects. Uh, so that is uh, one thing someone said. And I just remember... Howard Stern once talking about how guys would have sex with parking meters if they could. Man, I really timed this one badly with the guy working, doing yard work here. You know, that's enough. I'm not an expert on this. Uh, and the irony is I'm sitting here reading this to you and I say, look, don't lie about what the Torah says. 
I'm 45, I don't have any children, so who am I to talk to a certain extent? But no, 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 it is who am I to talk. I know what's right. I know how people like to avoid these issues. And frankly, in the Jewish community, there's a lot of people who say, don't ever say anything bad about anyone. That's Lushen Hara. You know, can't, how can you call them out when basically you're talking about a synagogue that's uh, really just about doing the bare minimum and just making you feel like you're doing something Jewish the couple times a year people show up and just not into what the Torah actually says. And then you say, oh, you can't ever say anything bad about it. No, I'm not like that. I'm just saying I'm, my life is no perfect example of anything. It's just I want to convey to you, again, I, I'm mentioning to you, my role is, I see it as, is as a librarian, as a conduit of, more than anything else, directing you to the really worthwhile information that's out there. And I happen to think, and I post it every year when we read this part, that the Dennis Prager essay uh, and I included another one with him, not really scaling back, but clarifying some of his points. I think they're really worthwhile to read. So what do you need to listen to me to? I'd rather spend you your I'd rather have you spend your time reading the Dennis Prager piece uh, that I have up there called Once Again. It is Judaism Sexual Revolution. And then the other the other thing to emphasize, and this is a good point, is we have a problem with actions. It's the act. We're all human, we're all sinners to some extent. Well, not all of us. There are people called Sadikim who really are quite perfect. I'm not one of them. And uh, while homosexuality is referred to as an abomination, as one other thing is, and that's pretty strong words, Judaism is not big on adulterers either. It's not big on a lot of things. Um, not, you know, people say, well, it's no big deal if I eat pork. Well, no, actually, it is a big deal if you eat pork, if you're Jewish. Um, all these things are not that we're perfect, but we're not going to pretend these things don't matter. And, um, you know, yeah, I've certainly prayed with people who are doing the wrong thing. I'm not perfect myself. Again, far from it. Uh, the point is, and it may be a cliche, but we have a problem with specific actions, not with the person. And I think Prager makes that, you know, let me see if I can find that real quick. It's at the beginning of his other essay, not the longer one, the shorter one. I put the link in there. Uh, I just want to make sure you get it. Uh, man, I want to get out of here. I want to get to the beach before Shabbos starts real quick. Okay. Homosexuality, an attempt at clarity. The homosexual is equal in God's eyes to the heterosexual. Uh, he makes the point, parents must love their children, including the children, child who is homosexual. At the same time, a homosexual child must understand a loving parent's sadness over his or her inability to sexually love a person of the opposite sex. And obviously, uh, that parents are going to be a little more appreciative of children who bring them grandchildren, which would be not be me, not be me at this point. I hope that changes. Uh, but it would be my younger brother and younger sister. They got five grandchildren, so I guess a little pressure's off, but no. I mean, and totally understandable, by the way. And I don't even have those tendencies, so I don't have that as an excuse. I just had one marriage, which was kind of late, uh, already in my 40s, and uh, it didn't really work out. So let me just see if there's any other point here. Uh... He says, we do not know why people are homosexual. The cause may be genetic or it may be neonatal, but we have nothing approaching proof for either explanation. He wrote these both over 10 years ago. Well, that uh, he makes the point is it is unfair to a child who can be adopted by a married couple to be adopted by a same sex couple. Okay, but not every married situation is better. People can talk about that. All right. Uh, he makes the point that homophobic is an epithet, ep epithet as other terms are epithets. Interesting. Uh, again, I want you just to read it. Uh, and he concludes with none of these propositions in any way contradicts the opening statement. The homosexual is equal in God's eyes to the heterosexual. So you may think I'm not really presenting this very well. You may think I'm confused. I'm contradicting myself. I don't care. Just read the essays. That's my point of this. Uh, and, uh, you know, then if you want to avoid big issues, well, another line this week is treat your neighbor as yourself. And that's a lot more, uh, a lot less controversial. And if you're in company and you don't want to offend anyone, I'd go with that one. All right. Good Shabbos.